Hey, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing quite well. How are you? Well, I'm doing okay. I've been spending a little bit of time doing research because, as the old Patrick Luck has it, I drew the scenario that has an incredible amount of intrigue and backstory. Would you like to hear about it? Do tell. Oh, I shall. Now, let me just put this right up there for you. As I mentioned, there is an incredible amount of behind-the-scenes uh, scheming and intrigue here in the, uh, well, this is really the height of the Roman Imperial period, and I am not going to do any justice to this. So what I would recommend any and all of you to do is take us up on that recommendation to go onto your local podcast player and look up Mike Duncan's History of Rome. He's got, I'm sure, at least two or three episodes dedicated to just this specific period. But we're going to, I'm going to do the best I can. And I ask that you, you bear with me as I... You'll be fine. Thanks, man. I cannot spin a yarn the way that Peter spins a yarn. You all know it. It's true. But here is our story tonight. We are going to be talking about the Battle of First Bedriacum. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it takes place in the year 69 AD, a.k.a. the Year of Four Emperors. And I really like, I feel like I need to do some post-production sound effects. The Year of Four Emperors. But whatever. That was fine. That's just like that. Cool. Anyway, so the story so far is we are ending the period of the reign of Nero. And Nero had run from 54 until just a year before this battle. He has worn out his welcome. We all know how he, uh, he fiddled while Rome burned and other apocryphal stories such as that. But by the end of his reign, he had so enraged and inflamed not only the Senate and the populace, but pretty much all the elites had turned against Nero. We are seeing this period is full of political trials and lots of plots and schemes, as I mentioned. So there was just a general era of disenchantment between the Senate and Nero. Just a couple of years before this, in 67, in the winter of 67-68, a man by the name of Gaius Julius Vindex, who is the legate of Gallia Lugdunensis, which is, if we're talking modern period, this is northwestern France. It's a very large central part of Gaul, and Paris is actually in this part of Gaul. He was trying to drum up support for the idea of getting other governors and legates and administrators to uh, call for a revolt against Nero. And because of his humble background, they pretty much all denounced him, and they were using this as an opportunity to try to get some points with Nero, because they're all cronies of Nero. So they send all of this word back to Nero that, hey, this guy up here is attempting to overthrow you. But the one man who didn't do so was Servius Sulpicius Galba, he is the governor of Hispania, uh, pretty much the bulk of the northern and eastern provinces of Hispania, which is called Terraconensis. Uh, in 68, the two of them discuss a possible revolt, and they come to an accord in which Galba would lead his legions in a revolt to move against Nero directly, and Vindex would then proclaim Galba to be the rightful emperor of Rome. Galba does do that. He leaves the security of Spain uh, to some of his underlings. In fact, he actually takes the opportunity to off uh, several rivals. He says, well, I'm leaving. So he has many of his rivals executed. And not only does he do it there as he's leaving Spain, but as he takes the coastal route all the way around the Mediterranean through France and into Cisalpine Gulf, he actually uh, settles a lot of scores with other rivals during the time including when he arrives at the city gates of Rome as he's crossing the Tiber River, he will uh, commit what is known as the Massacre at the Milvian Bridge. Prior to this, upon hearing Galba's, what he's considering insurrection, Nero decides, well, I think the writing's on the wall, so is wary of this, and he's thinking about just going ahead and leaving for Egypt. And another factor in this is that the deputy of the Praetorian Guards is a friend of Galba's, he told the Praetorians that, hey, when the new emperor arrives, he'll give you something like 30,000 sesteries. So he'll, he'll make you very rich if you just throw in your loyalty with him. And of course, what do they do? They take the money. And when Nero finds out about this uh, internal uh, plot, he says, I'm just going to go ahead and commit suicide. 
There's no honor left for him, and he does commit suicide on June 9th, 68. Once Galba has arrived to what he considers to be a triumph, he is seated in Rome. He is declared the emperor by the Senate. Then the second of our potential emperors, one of the governors of Germania Inferior, uh, a man by the name of Aulus Vitellius. Now, one of the things, one of the, the habits that Galba did when he arrived was he promoted a lot of ineffectual people. He did like Nero did, and he puts them into positions far, far away from them so they, you know, they're, they can't do any harm to him. Uh, one of these men is Aulus Vitellius. What he doesn't realize is that Aulus is at the lead of several very powerful legions. These are all crack veteran troops from the Germanic Wars. So they're all loyal to him during his time there in Germania. Galba realizes that he trusts no one except for some of the allies that he brought with him from Spain. So even those allies that had risen up with him in Spain are starting to turn against him because they realize he's hitting them in the purse strings with all the strife in Rome. And one of these other rivals is, uh, is an underling by the name of uh, Marcus Salvius Otho. He thought the heir apparent would be him. He thought, well, uh, I've been loyal to him. He's going to name me his successor. He's going to adopt me, much like Julius Caesar did with Octavian. But that did not happen. He actually uh, favored another and promoted that person to sort of be his heir apparent. Of course, that enrages Otho enough that he uses his wealth and power to, once again, bribe those apparently oh-so-loyal Praetorian guards to his bidding. He has them form a plot against Galba, and Galba realizes this, and he actually goes out into the street and tries to drum up support from the populace of Rome in his favor. But that was a mistake. He actually is assassinated, much like Julius Caesar, right there in the forum by those self-same Praetorian guards that are supposed to be loyal only to the emperor. Literally, the day that he is assassinated by the Praetorians, the Senate proclaims that Otho is now the new emperor. And now, Aulus Vitellius, who is up in Germania, as we said, and has those legions that are loyal to him, now decides that he is going to proclaim himself, with his support of his legions, the rightful emperor. So he's going to march on Rome, because that's what you do. You march on Rome. When Otho finds out about this, he raises two or three legions. He leaves his brother Titanius in, in Rome to kind of keep the peace. And they march north to meet uh, just south of the Alps in the Cisalpine region, near sort of present-day Milan. They meet there. They have a few small skirmishes, and Otho is initially successful. And that is really only because Vitellius has split his force. Once he suffers the first minor defeat from Otho, they stop regroup near the town of uh, Bedriacum here, which is also a modern city of Cremona. Uh, Otho has a couple of generals, one of whom we know about from just last week, Suetonius Paulinus who was successful in defeating Boudicca. And because of that, he is a trusted advisor on all things military. Uh, he advises that Otho should just wait and then call his brother forward to bring even more uh, generals to the battlefield. And that's what Otho does. He actually heeds that credence and he calls his brother forward, who brings another couple of legions. When they arrive, Paulinus is saying, hey, we're getting everyone here, let's get organized, and we'll approach with caution. But Titanius says, we should go right for them. So even though his men are tired from this long force march from Rome, they just go straight into Cremona and try to face off against Vitellius. Uh, and that's going to be their undoing, because it's a very short battle, unfortunately, for Otho. They will take the initiative, they will attack Vitellius, who is now regrouped and in a good defensible position, but because they are already fatigued, on the counterattack, Vitellius is going to capture a couple of those eagle standards. The entire force will just crumple and race back to camp. Uh, Paulinus sees the mistake here that Titanius has done. Once they arrive back in camp, they all swear allegiance to Vitellius. They sue for peace. And with that, Otho says, oh, wow, I'm not going to face off against Vitellius. So he contemplates suicide. His, 
his troops are saying, no, no, we have reinforcements coming, we can still do this, but he decides to do the honorable thing to save the lives of all those reinforcements arriving and commits suicide. And that's kind of the end of this story. Uh, Vitellius will then march on Rome to what he considers a triumph. They all seem to do that. They march into Rome to great fanfare, and the Senate will declare him the new emperor of Rome. So now we have the third of our four emperors of Rome in just one year. He will last until uh, the second battle of Bedriacum, which is going to happen in October. So he's going to rule for about six months. But during that time, uh, a new rival will appear, and that will be Vespasian, who is sent off to Judea and uh, Syria, and he's the provincial governor and military general of those spaces. He's been keeping them secure. His forces out there, his legions say, you should be emperor. So he will be the fourth one to declare himself emperor, and just like the rest of them, he will march on Rome. He will take out Vitellius in October, making him the fourth emperor in our year of four emperors. That is a very, very long-winded session for tonight, so I do apologize, but there was a lot of material to cover and a lot of names to go through there. But why don't you tell us a little bit about our apparently very short battle tonight? Uh, this is a short and sweet battle. We're only playing the five banners tonight. The Vitellian army is going to have six command cards, while the Othian army will have five, but they'll get to go first. The only special rule here is that both legions are considered to be Julian legions, so all the heavies and mediums can move and throw a pull them, or they can move to and not fight. In addition, there's a special unit on the board for the Othinians. That is the Praetorian Guard. The Praetorian Guard essentially act as if they have a leader with them. They'll get a score hit for each leader symbol rolled. And they can ignore one flag. They just don't get to do the special advancing stuff that a leader can do. So there we go. I will take the Ophidians first, and Patrick will fight with the Vitellians. So I guess I will draw my five command cards first oh. and get things started. Okay. Well, I think six command cards, that's, uh, that's handy. But we have a lot of wide open space here. All right, I have my six command cards, so since you are going first, I will wish you good luck. All right, thank you. Think. I'll start in the center. Where are these two units? Those Torians to move up. I will do a line command. Mm -hmm. Activate this line to come to there. Okay. I will activate three units on the left. Oops. Shall aggressively push forward. I see. I'll activate my light troops. I'll do those six. Have these auxilia come to there. And they will move forward one. They will move forward one. And the light bow will just fire. So we'll start with the light bow here. Try to flush your lights there with two dice. And do pretty good. Ooh. One's got some hot dice tonight. No. Okay. Here's one from that light unit. Ooh. That was unexpected. This one will... Feel the heat. <laughs> Coming off the street. One die from this one. Ooh, we get that flag. That is all for that move. Those units there. And just 
with one spear and a spite and get nothing. Let's do three in the center. I have three in the center. Here we go. One, two. These guys will fire there. See if we can't finish those lights with two dice. And we do! Surprisingly effective missile fire tonight. Okay. Three on the left. After those lights, they will evade. Okay, five dice. Well evaded. Spear. Nothing. Do three on the right. Let's do those three. Do this first. We can do five dice mm -hmm. plus leader bonus. Okay. And three hits and a retreat. We'll take it. I'm going to do five dice against Paulinus there. Leader bonus. It's there. There's a leader check. He's fine. Okay, five dice back. Wow. It's two. See if I can keep that leader streak rolling. Nope. Okay. Uh, now have them throw one die at Paulinus. Bowman, two dice of Paulinus. Nothing. All right. Outflanked. So those two. One die. Nothing. Two dice. My leader hit. All right, four dice on those heavies. Do our first strike there. Uh, okay. There's five dice back or ahead, whatever. Take them out. All right. Pulling this. Five dice. Ooh boy. <laughs> he, I'd say I'd say he's stuck in his craw a little bit. Oh Apparently it did. Wowzers. This game. Let's uh press our luck. Five dice on that auxilia. Yes, indeed, your luck is strong. Well, we gotta. We see the other side crumple. We've gotta make our stand here. Brave Praetorians. Okay, we'll start with 
them. Four dice plus leader bonus. Mm, just a retreat. Um, oh, that's for, I'll ignore that's that. Right. As Praetorians, and fight back with five dice. Two hits. Oh, one hit. One hit. Okay. And then do unnamed centurion against those dastardly Praetorians. Five dice plus leader. And get three. Alright, five dice back. Just one. One. And a leader check. I think we will take that. Still got one shot here. Forgot. Yep. So here's one die. Nothing. Okay. Time for those bowmen. Let's evade. Four dice. Good to be. Mm. Two hits on the way out. Smack them. Do four in the center. Those four. This one here first. It's going to be five dice plus leader bonus. Uh, two hits and a retreat they must take. I'm going to take them both. Okay. Uh, we'll come in here, attack this one as well. Five dice plus leader. Two hits, two retreats. Okay. Um, do this against the Praetorians. Four dice plus leader. Very, very close. Uh, and then five dice plus leader. hits. Four dice back with leader support. Mm. One hit. Oh, wipe, no, wipe three hits. Out. Leader check. Okay. Do this shot. One die against your medium cav. are no sure things here and it is sudden death practically so I'm going to gamble clear that I am smart Spartacus with five days five, five days. days here we go okay make it work <sighs> oh, what are those units Oh, that wacky surround thing. Okay. So, I'm going to have to throw a spear. Am I rolling two dice because of Spartacus? Yes, you are. All right. Two spears at those mediums. Nothing. This is where so three dice against those heavies. There's five back with leader. Three. But let's keep on going. Three dice. Come on, I need some red squares. Okay. Five again. Just a retreat and a hit. 
All right. Five dice. Here we go. Ah, two flags. Yeah, gotta take one. Okay. Yeah, but I've got too many weak units around you. Well, sir. <laughs> did you just get Spartacus yeah. again? <laughs> I did. All right. Let's see if we can't get a Coupe de Gracie here. Here's five dice. Leader bonus. It's one. Five dice, leader bonus. And that's two. But say what you will about these five, and I don't know what we say. I'll have to go back and look on what we say. Uh, they're fast, of course, and I think that's just because where we are in our play styles now, but still very tense. This one could have gone either way. I mean, just nail-biter. Yeah, inst instead of Spartacus, my other option was Mounted Charge. Bringing this guy over here. And getting two on that. So, yeah. 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 yeah, still, still fun. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and we'll take our quick break here, and we'll discuss this more at the end. But we'll be right back with round two. Round number two, fight! I get the Othonians, and of course, the entire time I was doing the research for this, all I could think of was Beetlejuice and Otho. So, my knowledge of history is tainted by the works of Tim Burton. Uh, I'm going to draw five command cards. No. Yes? I get five. You get five. I get five. All right. So, here we go. Best five card hand ever. All right. Well... Thank you go first this turn. I wish you good luck. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. All right. Let us start with two in the center. Do a leadership any section. Anything else I can play? I drew it out. Ha ha. Which four will it be? Those four, of course. Cue the Brian Blessed quoting. Who wants to live forever? And blood! Alright. Golden is alive! Alright, here we go. Five dice. We are support. Boom. Shaka laka laka. Alright, two. And a retreat. Yes, I see that retreat, but I do not believe it. Give me a leader check. Mm. Ooh, close. Titanius. All right, here's five back with leader. Devastating. Three hits. Here's leader check. Oh, a named centurion. Your life has been given for the folly of attempting to wrest control of Rome from its rightful emperor. Well, four dice. No leader support now. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can get some red squares or some cross swords. Oh. There we go. You know what you've done. And... Oh. 
Blood. Centurion has been avenged. All right. Going after those Praetorians. The five dice and the leader. Support. Wait, 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 wait. Can we make a deal here first? Because we work for reasonable rates. <laughs> no. Ha -ha. Take two. Two, you say? I will give you five back. Three hits. Here's a leader check. Hmm. These lights going in there with leader support. <laughs> two dice on those Praetorians. Okay. They can do it. You can do it. They can yeah. almost do it, but now they will pay the iron price. Five dice plus leader. Uh, one hit. Well, sir. I think we need to do two in the center. Press our advantage while we can. All right. Let's start here with the Praetorians. Five dice plus leader. We wipe them out. Here's Vitellius. He's fine. That's fine. That's fine. But now Vitellius will le will lead from the back like a like a good and proper leader. Sure. All right. We'll do four dice. Turn those lights into uh, acts of bravery and heroism. Yes. Across the river sticks they will go. Here's four dice. Uh, four dice. Nothing. Five dice back. <sighs> Two. And two flags. Okay, so one, two hits, and you, you, you can ignore one. both flags. I can you can ignore, ignore both. both. Right, right. Okay, we will. Uh, boo! Clash of shields. Mm -hmm. All right. So seven dice on those warriors. I'd say you got him. Four dice on the Praetorians with leader support. Ooh, Ooh nothing. Nothing. Five dice back. And yeah, two hits. Yeah. Oh, and they do hit. Yeah, they. I will do that because they'll stop when they hit him. Yes. Uh All right. And six dice on those mediums. One. And a retreat. A retreat. So sad. That clash of shields. That should have been. <laughs> you know what? Counterattack! Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, four dice against those lights because you scattered everyone else. That I was like, ooh, we're gonna we're gonna trade blows here. But all right, four dice looking for one red square. I got one red square. There it is. All tied up again. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> Here's a line command for this this line here. Mm -hmm. Four dice against those Praetorians. <laughs> oh, you're killing me, game. Do a move, fire move. Oh dear. That's another tie coming up. <laughs> Three, four. It's all of my lights. Uh, 
All right. Let's start with the light bow here first. Two dice against your lights with Vitellius. Nothing. And one more. Nothing. And two. Or excuse me, one to that medium. All right, second part of this. Line command. Damn it. <laughs> this line. All right. Four dice with leader support. All right. Those mediums. Ah. Oh, well done, sir. Man. Here's my other line command. Yeah. That's Here's my mount of charge. <laughs> Here's my mount of charge. Oh. What are you doing? Do the rally. I just had a. Oh, I had a terrible hand. What are you talking about? The right tools, man. You still got it. All right, so first let's do our final score. I got five and three for eight. Peter got five and four for nine. So you take the evening by one block. Well done. This is expected in a, in a small battle like this. This this is a small, bloody fight, and it really... It, it's whoever can kind of close that middle ground and hit first because there are so many heavy units on the board. Yeah. Yeah. So, but fun, fun, quick, all quick game. Yeah. I had hoped that I could, well, when I, I figured you had a double time and I was, I was loath to put myself right at that spot, but I figured if I didn't sync everybody up, I was going to be paying for it later. Unfortunately, both of us had a, an absolutely crushing leader loss, which extended the game a bit there in the center. But you're right, this one is, as we like to say, it is the knife fight in a telephone booth because it's a lot of maneuver to get to where you're going. But once you do, it's the dust settles pretty quickly because you're just chucking five or six dice and you had the clash of shields, which, man, if if only, if only I could have survived and not retreated, you know. Yeah. Because I was going to counterattack. Well, I did counterattack that, but I was I was hoping to get two or three blocks uh, counterattacking that, but uh, that that would have ended it, I think. But Vitellius last. Well, I thought when I played it, it was going to end it, but yeah, it didn't. So yeah. you never know. You never you roll know. the dice. You never know. So any other thoughts on this one before we call it a night? I think I think I've said all I need to say here. Yeah, yeah. This was definitely fun. I mean, it's that's the sad thing about it is just when it's getting really interesting, it's over. You know, that's that's the problem with five blocks. Finding that sweet spot of, is it six? Is it seven? Sometimes it's eight. But with this one, it's just when you're getting things moving and you have a chance, <laughs> then fate crashes down on your hopes. So, eh, it is what it is. I really enjoyed it nonetheless because it's a fun night of commands and colors with you, sir. Absolutely. Well, then we will put a pin in this one, of course, and move on to next week. Peter will be taking the, again, far better executed research, I'm sure. We'll be heading back to Britain next week. Oh, boy! We get all of our friends up there in the British Isles. Uh, nice. if, you, uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. We hope this is your good first introduction to this. We certainly have all the playlists. Go back and watch uh, the, the evolution of this. Thanks for joining us here, and if you could take a moment, click that like and subscribe, as everybody on YouTube asks every day. I know you hear it all the time, but it really helps. We need the engagement just so that, you know, the YouTube algorithm, which is this great mystic force out there, it will help the channel grow, and we need your help for doing that, and you can do that by just simply commenting down there below. We have lots of people that point out all of our little issues and strategic decisions, and we really appreciate that. Peter, thank you for an excellent series of games tonight. Very exciting. And I look forward to next week. Well, thank you. You too. My pleasure. And we will see you here next week. Have a good one. Good night.